story time. Wasn't last week's story time with Miss Amy fantastic? Well, before we get started today, I have a very serious question for you. Are you ready? Can you jump? What about can you creep? Are you ready to hi -ya? If you answered yes to all of those questions, then you are going to have an awesome time today because today we get to talk about ninjas and we get to do all the things that ninjas do. But first, we have to warm up. And what better way to warm up than by singing our hello song? So I need you to stand on up and dance along with me, okay? special sign of the day. So because our, we're going to talk about ninjas, our special sign is the word ninja, of course. But in American Sign Language, there isn't just one word for the word, there isn't just one sign for the word ninja like there is for the other signs we've been using. So instead, we are going to spell out the word ninja with our fingers. On the screen, you're going to see the word ninja spelled out for you. To spell out with our fingers, we have to make the letter N, which is you're going to take your thumb and you're going to put your thumb underneath your two, uh, your first two fingers like this. And then we're going to make an I, which is holding up your pinky. And then we're going to make another N, same sign as before, put your thumb in underneath your two first fingers. And then to make the J, we're going to hold the pinky again and we're going to scoop like we're, like we're creating the letter J with our pinky. And last is letter A, which is like this, with your thumb on the side of your fist like this. You ready to do it again? We have N, I, N, J, A. Good job. Let's try it one more time. N, I, N, J, A. Nice. And that is how you spell the word ninja in American Sign Language. Good job. You know, learning sign language is actually a really fun thing to do. Maybe you can try learning the whole alphabet in sign language or with your mom and dad's help, find more signs on the internet. But for now, before we get to our first story, I think we need to practice saying other words that have the letter N in them. Are you ready? Okay, then I need you to stand on up and we're gonna play Simon Says. Okay. Simon says to rub your neck. <laughs> Simon says to wiggle your nails. Simon says to touch your nose. Simon says to pat your noggin. Simon says to smack your knees. <laughs> Simon says to put your listening ears. And let's get ready for our first story. Great, now let's read the Secrets of Ninja School by Deb Paludi. Tucked outside the biggest section of the village, over a meandering book, 
across a wide yellow field of waving grass and up a steep craggy hill sat a school. It was dark most of the year, but for one weekend each summer, boys and girls came from all over the valley to learn the ways of the ninja. Master Willow called them, called them saplings. They came to learn how to sneak and slither and creep invisibly, jump, crib, jump, kick, and throw skillfully, sit, listen, and wait patiently, and how to be brave. But most of all, they came to Master Willow School for Ninjas to discover their very own secret skill. The saplings learned quickly, except for Ruby. When she sneaked, slithered, and crept, Ruby was not invisible. When she jumped, kicked, and threw, Ruby was not skillful. When she sat, listened, and waited, Ruby was not patient. Hmm. And Ruby was most certainly not brave. Oh dear. If Ruby had a secret skill, she did not know how to find it. Aw, poor Ruby. Oh, Master Willow, said Ruby, I will never be a ninja. Don't worry, sapling, you will improve. But I'm afraid, whispered Ruby. We are all afraid of something, said Master Willow. What if I don't have a secret skill? Every sapling has one, said Master Willow. It's a mystery to you now, but practicing the ways of the ninja will help you discover it. So Ruby practiced. Even though she was getting better, she still felt no closer to finding her secret skill. Bedtime was the hardest. At the far side of the night, when even the shadows slept, Ruby lay wide awake. A teardrop rolled down one cheek and landed on the pillow. Plop. Which woke the other saplings. What's wrong? They asked. I'm homesick, cried Ruby. Ninjas don't get homesick, said saplings. Ninjas are brave, said another. But I miss my family, said Ruby. And Ruby told the saplings about how when she was wide awake like tonight, her father would read her books filled with tales of adventure. Or when she was afraid of the dark like tonight, Mother would turn on a small lamp and kiss Ruby on the very tippest part of her nose. Do your parents do that? Or when she was feeling worried, like tonight, Graham would bring out a big box heaped with material, thread, and colored buttons, and they would spend hours making the most magnificent creations. It was so quiet that Ruby thought the saplings had fallen back to sleep. But then she heard a sniff and a gasp and a wail before she knew it all the other saplings were crying. Oh, said Ruby, you're homesick too? Nonsense, cried one. Not me, bawled another. Ruby knew just what to do. What do you think she's going to do? Where are you going? asked a sapling. There was no answer. Let's follow, said another. But Ruby was nowhere to be found. When she sneaked down the hallway, Ruby was invisible. When she jumped over obstacles, Ruby was skillful. When she snipped and stitched and stuffed, Ruby was patient. And when she crept back to her room through the silent shadowy hallways, Ruby was very, very brave. <laughs> look, look at all the things she has for her saplings. 
Ruby swished on a lamp and the room filled with a warm glow. She gave each one of the saplings a stuffed dragon and told them stories of bravery and daring. Ruby, your skills are no longer a secret, exclaimed Master Willow. You are a wonderful storyteller, a fine dragon maker, and a very good friend. Ruby kept practicing because being brave isn't always easy, even for a ninja. <laughs> and look, when we open again, you can check out this book from the library and it has instructions on how you can make your own dragon softy. <laughs> the end. What a sweet story. I wonder what my, what my secret skill could be. What about your secret skill? Maybe this rhyme about ninjas can help us figure out what it is. Can you count the number of ninjas I have on this board? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. So we have five little ninjas creeping through the door. Creep, creep, creep. One said hi-ya! And then there were one, two, three, four. Four little ninjas climbing up a tree. Climb, climb, climb. One said hi-ya! And then there were one, two, three. Three little ninjas with nothing left to do. One said hi-ya! And then there were one, two. Two little ninjas having so much fun. One said hi-ya! And that left one little ninja on the run. He said hi-ya! And then there were none. <laughs> Good job. And now that we've all become experts on hi ya let's go on to our second story, Ninja by Ari Chung. The little boy's tying something around his head. Up oh, now he's creeping out of his room. What's he gonna do? A ninja needs a thick ninja stick, silent ninja footwear, sticky ninja gloves, an unbreakable ninja rope, and a bouncy ninja paddle. I am a ninja! <laughs> A ninja sneaks, creeps, tumbles, hides, and is fast on his feet. Can you do all those things? When a ninja finds his target, oh no, he must overcome obstacles. Like his dad sleeping on the couch and the sleeping dog. He will face danger, like the dog, show courage, and find the strength to defeat an angry beast. A ninja must master the element of surprise. <laughs> I think it worked. A ninja goes unseen on his mission to capture, oh no, cookies and milk. He must go into enemy territory, scale walls, remain undetected, and find the sacred cup. <laughs> Against all odds, he must believe. and his ability to rebound and overcome all challenges. Like his sister. I'm sure none of you have had have this experience, right? <laughs> ah ha 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 mission accomplished. You guys, cookies and milk. Uh-oh, I don't think he left.
left cookies for his sister. I am dishonored. Baby sister, let me teach you the way of the ninja. Sayonara, goodbye. <laughs> the end. Good job. And you know what? I think I already know some of you who are already masters at being ninjas in your homes. But just in case there are a few new ninjas with us today, I think we should practice being ninjas anyway, right? So I want you to stand on up and do what I do. Ninja, ninja, make no sound. Ninja, ninja, crouch on the ground. Ninja, ninja, jump up high. Ninja, ninja, reach for the sky. Reach, 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 reach. Ninja, ninja, hide your face. Ninja Ninja, run in place. Run, 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 run. Ninja Ninja, hands on top. Ninja Ninja, karate chop. Hiya! Good job. Now everyone can be a master ninja. But before we get to our last story, I have another question for you. What does a ninja look like? Do you know? Let's do one more rhyme so we can find out. Do you see a ninja? I do. Because first, to make our ninja, we need a head. And this one is round, and what color is it? Very good, it's red. Next, this rectangle will make a space just big enough for a peeking face. Then we will add two little circles for his eyes. One. And these little rectangles will make our ninja surprised. That's our ninja. Okay, so by now we've learned to hiya, to karate chop, and to creep around. But what else can ninjas do? Well, how about let's find out in our last story, Wink the ninja who wanted to be noticed by J.C. Phillips. It was the happiest day of Wink's life when he was accepted to the Summer Moon School for Young Ninjas. Master Zutsu taught the students to be strong and practice the art of stealth. Silence is the, is the weapon of the ninja, Master Zutsu said, but Wink could not be silent. Look at me, he hollered. Master Zutsu clapped like thunder and raised one angry finger to his lips. Later, the ninjas practiced their positions. Roundhouse kick, Master Zutsu ordered. One by one, the young ninjas performed. And then there was Wink. Yahoo! Master Zuzu's face twitched. The loudest cricket is the first to be caught. He sent Wink home. Aw, poor Wink. Grandmother greeted him. You look so sad, Wing Chan. The lucky dragon circus has come. Let us go and regain your smile. Wink sank into a pillow. Ninjas are stealthy and silent, he answered. They don't go to the circus. Time spent laughing is time well spent, Grandmother said. Wink said nothing and stared at the curtains. Those are nice and bright, he thought. The next day, Master Zutsu sent the students into a field. A ninja can disappear in any landscape, he said. The young ninjas became waving blades of grass, blending into the countryside. Then there was Wink. Master Zutsu frowned. The blossom that flaunts its color is soon plucked. But I'm being stealthy, Wink argued. I didn't make a sound. Silent to the ear, 
invisible to the eye. That is the art of stealth, Master Zutsu proclaimed. He sent Wink home. Grandmother poured him barley tea. Wink Chan, you look so serious. Wink sat down and sighed. Sometimes a worry must rest, she said. Let us go to the circus. The acrobats will cheer you. Ninjas have no use for cheer, Wink replied. He drank his tea and left the room. The next day, he would try harder. On a field trip to the zoo, Wink saw a chance to make Master Zuzu proud. He climbed into the panda's pen and hid among the bamboo. Yahoo, Wink thought. No one sees me. I am super stealthy. I'm the greatest ninja in all the world. But if no one sees me, no one knows I'm super stealthy. No one knows I'm a great ninja. Oh no. He couldn't help it. Wink just wanted to be noticed. And so I guess he decided to fight with a polar bear. I mean, with a panda bear. Mm -hmm. Master Zutsu didn't say anything. He raised one arm and extended a long, bony finger. Wink walked away with his head hanging. How could he show Master Zutsu he was a good ninja? From the other side of the wall, he heard a loud clank. A boy was busy stacking boards and cans. What are you doing? Wink asked. Practicing, said the boy. He climbed on top of the stack and tried to stand, but fell over with a thud. Your legs are too stiff, Wink said. Knees bang like a breeze. Hips become strong like rocks. Wink sprang to top to the top to demonstrate. The boy's family watched and clapped. Well done, said the father. A smile spread across Wink's face. I can do more. So Wink came back the next day and the next and the next and showed the boy and his family all the things he could do. He moves like a gazelle, swift and graceful, the mother said. His spirit shines as the morning sun, added the father. One day, both Master Zusu and Wink's grandmother received special envelopes in the mail. Inside each was a ticket. Hmm? Where do you think the ticket was, was to? To the Lucky Dragon Circus. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present the Nimble Ninja. Wink burst into view, flying through the air like a glittering cannonball. That is a cool outfit. He did axe kicks, fist strikes, hook punches, reverse chops, crescent kicks, iron palms, and fun back tornado flips. He even juggled fire sticks while balancing on a shoot of bamboo. That is amazing. Look at all that. Look at him doing all the kicks and stuff. Cool. Wink took a bow and the audience clapped and cheered. Grandmother said, your smile has come home. Master Zusu said, free flowing water will always find its way. And then there was Wink. <laughs> he smiled and took another bow. <laughs> the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story time. I am so glad you joined me. And I hope you join us again next week for another story time with Miss Amy from South Branch. Bye, have a good day.